You want to go live? Well, why don't we? Why don't we go live? Shout out, YouTube. My YouTubers. This is officially the takeover of the game. Who else is doing it? I mean, let's roll that intro while we give them time to get in, y'all. Hey, Rob Bartell, y'all is coming in the building. This one's about to be a good one. Don't sleep on it. This is a connection. L on the beat. Peace, love, and harmony. We back at you with another banger, YouTube gang. Young Elder gang. Hey, shout out uh, Katie Dripgar and LifeWave on uh, opening their new uh, store, the Health Culture Center over at uh, 4717 Covenant Highway in, De uh, in De uh, Decatur, Georgia. We went out there yesterday. It was lit. It's live. It's it's. You know, we, I'm proud of my brothers uh, for opening up their, you know, starting their business, you know, and they young brothers, you know, still in their 20s, you know, doing it big, you know what I'm saying? So if you want to go check that out, you know, saying 47, 17 Covenant, we're going to be going over there to actually do a video uh, and show you around. We were supposed to do it yesterday, but my, when I got over there for the, the second time, when they finally opened, my phone was dead and I had left the camera in the other car. So, uh. Uh, I couldn't get to the camera, so it was like, you know, so I'm about to pull back up on them. We're going to show y'all what's popping on that. But as you can see from the title, and we had, we had to uh, put certain titles certain ways so we can get certain information out to you. Now, if you're thinking that you're coming on here and you say, oh, you're going to just talk about Bumpy Johnson and this and that, and this ain't going to really be no information that I need to watch, you sadly mistaken. This is a part of your of what happened to us. This is a what I'm about to tell you is gonna blow your mind, and it's a part of what happened to us as a uh, people. It's a part of how we got robbed. Keep in mind, Bumpy Johnson was high up. He was in with the uh, the Alphabet Boys. Yeah, so he was in. He was in with the Alphabet Boys. But we're about to break the whole thing down for you. Now they put this 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 whole truth out uh in detail into the movie uh of the, of the series Godfather of Harlem. You can check that out on uh Hulu. But they got it on Hulu and uh maybe another couple maybe uh, I don't know if it's on Netflix no more. 
where they got one through three where they break down the whole storyline. But we're about to give you the real deal, Holy Field. They gave you, they got all these characters. We're about to give you, show you the real characters, the real people on what happened to us and how the uh, Ashkenazian Jews came in to New York, which was called New Amsterdam at first. And they began taking over the different things we were using in, 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 the, in the, um, the Nubian community. The Nubian had their own community going and it was generating money to benefit them. Keep in mind, in the, neighbor, in the neighborhoods now, all of our money is going to uh, foreigners. And most of, uh, like in Atlanta, it's, it's, a, uh, you know, it's a lot of foreigners here too, but there's a lot of Nubians that own a lot of businesses. And so we can just go go spend money with those Nubian businesses, right? Like like I just said, my brother Lifeway and them, and uh, Katie Dripguard just opened up their new store. So these their brothers, we go shop with them, right? Uh, but for the most part, around the United States, foreigners collect the money from like the women going to get all the makeup products and hair products from the gas stations uh, and things of that that nature. So all of these all of these things. Uh, we, we we not really generate money to, to go to our back to our community. The money is being pulled out of our community and sent overseas to these other foreign uh, family members who are draining our community. So that's why our community turned into ghettos because, uh, for the most part, uh, we're not in, reinvesting and the money is being pulled out instead of staying in the community. That's what Elijah Muhammad was trying to do: create a community where everybody spent money with everybody, so the money stayed in the circle. And, uh, you know, that's one reason why they ain't like Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But all that's going to tie in together to what we're about to get ready to show you. So let me share my screen, man, because we're about to get started, man. It was giving them time to get in. Everybody hit that light. We got 62 people. That's all we need. Because this is going to be exclusive. Trust me. This is, this is, you ain't never heard the story. This, this exclusive. It, it don't get no more exclusive than this. All right, let's get that. Uh, hey, to let me know in the chat if you can see my screen, man. We're gonna, uh, you know, we do back to the slides, man. We took the last week off. We've been, matter of fact, I've been working on this a couple tapes, uh, a couple slides all week for different classes. And so, uh, I was gonna do this class last week, but uh, over time, I guess they didn't let me do it because I found out more information about uh the stuff they're about to talk about okay so let's uh see can we enlarge these icons so we can see what's going on here now for you not for those who are not familiar with bumpy johnson we gotta give you a little background on bumpy johnson all this is gonna play a part, right? So, like I say, if you listen to, you about to be sadly mistaken, because this is part of what Rod is talking about, and I'm gonna explain to you and break it. They say they glitching my live. You say it's glitching, and I'm right by the internet. The internet is like right here. They glitching my live. Yeah, they know they know what I'm about to do, but it's the, it's the thing uh, for them, them people that is trying to. How you think I got it? You told us blatantly what what happened, right? So it's still is they still glitching me, y'all. So for y'all that's not uh, familiar, not familiar with Bumpy Johnson, this is Bumpy Johnson. Johnson uh, people come from I think it was South Carolina. They he connected with the Geechees, but he went up to New uh, Harlem, started putting his foot into the ground. Just making a long story short. Okay, I'm good. I right, appreciate your steals. Um, Bumpy now sounds like the stuff that we're about to tell you, we ain't praising Bumpy for what he was doing because he was putting poison on the streets. We can get straight down to it. So, but I have reason to believe that he connected to the same the same people. He could, his bloodline is connected to the, these people I'm about to show you. Uh, and that's why they was using him, right? As one of these dark skin um moors or whatever these short jokers i believe he had some bloodline ties to them because he kind of resembled the dude that uh was sir 98 the chemist we're about to break all this down but bumpy 
really he took over he took over Harlem. He was like the the uh, the black godfather of Harlem. Now how he be, how he got that term the godfather? Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. We gotta build this story up for you. Now, if you go all the way back before Bumpy and who he was working for, he was working for a lady. And like I told y'all a long time ago, we was going to bring all this to the forefront. But it was more that we had to put together to tie this in together. Because, okay, let's let she go right there. Okay, I want to show you this lady. Her name is uh, Stephanie St. Saint Clair. Stephanie Madam St. Saint Clair. Uh, where is she? Where is she? And this lady, okay. Okay, here's a picture of her. Let's go back. All right, here's a picture. This is the dude Dutch. We're gonna get it to him too, and why he played a part in trying to shit the, the queen down. All right, this is her right here. Stephanie Sinclair. This is who Bumpy uh worked for, right? At first, she was running Harlem. Why how this lady was worth five million dollars back in the 1910s, 1920s, early 20s. And that's equivalent to 500 million dollars today. She was a half a billionaire almost back then in the tens, a Nubian lady in Harlem. How was she? Uh, uh, how was she making all that money? She they, they estimated she was making close to a quarter million dollars a year, uh, running numbers, what they call running numbers. Now, for you people that's not familiar with running numbers, back in the day over here, the Nubians way before time, they we play a numbers games numbers games where we write a number down and they turn that number in and then they calculate something based on the stars. They did it based on the stars first and came out with the numbers. And you, you hit, you made some money out based off what you bet. It's the same thing as the lottery right now. The mafia took this over time from us and it became known as the lottery. But we, but this lady was one of the main ladies that was running numbers in Harlem. And, and before Dutch Schultz, we're going to get into uh, Dutch Schultz, who we're going to get into. I might not be saying his last name right, but I'm gonna, we're going to get into him because he was a he was a Jewish guy. He really an Ashkenazi German Jew based on his last name. Now, OK, so the guy. So that they, uh, when when the, before immigration, keep in mind, a lot of Jewish people, Italian people got came over here on immigration. They are not originally from here. They came over later during immigration and began working their way up into the and get everybody wanted a piece of the American pie once they saw how uh, wealthy and how things were going over here. It was way better than what they make y'all think. They burned all of our, our buildings and stuff and structures down and re, it got rebuilt. It's what you're seeing now, but it was better than what it is right now before they came over and destroyed it. All right. So keep in mind this dude. Dutch, the Dutch, right? Uh, he saw how the queen was making money in, in her community off of the numbers amongst the Nubian community. And he wanted, he started his own numbers running uh, thing in his community amongst the Jewish people and the Italians. Now, keep in mind, let's we can go to the internet. Let's go to the internet and look up this dude last name and show you wh wh who he connected with. So, so you can get a better picture on the Canaanites or these these white faces who are the Jewish people who work for these dark hands. And I'm gonna tie them back to the dark hand. Watch what I tell. Watch what I tell you. All right, the Dutch. This all gonna play a part. And keep in mind, this tie in. This right here ties in with the tape called "What Happened to Malcolm," because this is part of what happened to Malcolm and part of what was happening with Elijah Muhammad now. All right, so if you look up his last name and in connection, it's going to tell you right here, when you go down to right here, it says Schultz is a common German and Jewish Anschenanken family name from Germany. So that's Jewish. That's the that's that one tribe um, that Rob was telling you about, that Baba pointed out. It's two of them. It was the Ashanakins and the Khazars. The Khazars, right? So he from that other tribe, the German sick, not the Khazars who are the Russian sick, right? He from the so 
Dutch was from these Jewish people who came over as immigrants. And then all of a sudden now he becomes a gangster, right? A criminal. And he started attacking the queen to take over her, take over her number running organization because he saw how much money he was making. Now, could Dutch be puppeted by somebody else? Yeah, I have reason to believe so. That the Dutch is puppeted by somebody else as part of the country. As part of the country. All right. So that's the lady that Bumpy worked for. Maybe do a little research on this lady. It says that she was from the West Indies Islands, I think. And, and I, I never did figure out how did she come get to America or was she born in America and how did she accumulate her wealth, her first auto wealth. Now, we, we did find out that she was married to a dude that was a Buddhist, uh, was a Moor. She was married to a dude that was a Moor who was an airplane pilot. This is the dude right here who all of a sudden died from an airplane crash. And I wonder who sabotaged his plane. I wonder who sabotaged this dude's plane. This dude was a Moor. And he was a Buddhist monk. I mean, a Buddhist uh, on a Buddhist Moorish temple. Why, why is this dude connected with her? Why is this her husband? They had, this lady had airports. This lady had property. This lady was worth, like I say, uh, $5 million back then. Uh, she was worth $5 million back then, but that's equivalent to $500 million today. Okay, so this is the lady Bumpy worked for. Now, let's make some more connections for you. This this about to get deep, y'all. If you're sleeping on this class, this about to this, you gonna you gonna you about to get a crook in your neck. Now, let's talk about this guy because this connect this connected to Bumpy. All right. Now it's a guy who you probably heard of. Some of you might not 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 have heard of him. This is the guy right here. Okay. Now keep in mind they end up beating the Dutch with uh with the help of Lucky Luciano. Okay, let's we're gonna pull him up too and get him up on now. But this guy is Frank Costello. Now keep in mind who's Frank Costello. Frank Costello, if you watch The Godfather in Harlem, he's the big guy that be with Bumpy and the Cane playing chess. He's the movie they made The Godfather about. They made the real Godfather about the dude Frank Costello. OK, who this is a real this is the real picture. This ain't the actor. So all the pictures we showing you in here are the real people, not the people who played them in the movie. They play, they made a big dude, fat dude with a cane that was going around hanging with Bumpy and teaching Bumpy. Now, they say uh, Frank Costello taught Bumpy how to play chess. OK, hey, hold up. Okay, we're gonna get into all these people. Okay. So they say uh this this is how Bumpy learned about the uh, learn about the Italian mafia and how they were structured and how they was ran. He learned from the number one godfather himself, who they made the movie about Vito Corleone. They actually took two uh made up the last name and they took the first name from Vito Ginagichi, who was actually uh part of the same family right so they mixed the names up but frank frank costello is the dude that they made the movie about like i said godfather part one part two and part three and this guy supposedly tooted bumpy that which is how bumpy became the black godfather of harlem right that's how he got that name godfather attached to him due to the tutorage of frank costello now frank costello was like the, the overboss of the five families now let's break down who the five families were Okay, you know, uh, Vito, Vito was one of them, but he, but he went to jail. He went to jail. Hold on, let me, let me pull, pull all them up. Okay, that's the New Orleans. We're gonna get to that. That's not part. These guys are part of the Kennedy assassination. We'll get into them in a minute. All right, let me pull up the five bosses. All right, you got Carlos Gambino, you got Joseph uh, Pafacci. This is he was one of the bosses during Bumpy time. I'm gonna show you all the bosses. Now, bump. It really was seven. It really was a seven families. It's because the Johnsons made up one of the families of the, of the five families, but they didn't really care the families, right? So let me show you. Okay, we're gonna get all of them. 
and all this information is out they can't get mad at me they already put all this out they can't get mad at me for just re just redoing it because uh me me told it all all right now before i uh go to these guys hold up let me talk about because this right here connects back to the queen all right if you saw the uh it's a movie called hoodlums if you've seen hoodlums you know know about lucky luciano lucky luciano is the one that are going to start to organize the five families with two other bosses once they took another boss out he the one started setting up the uh the five families and his his throne sort of say as being the overboss over the five families got passed down to frank costello because keep in mind bumpies were good friends with lucky luciano and if you look at luciano you can tell he a mulatto these Italians are these from these original Italians um got Moorish bloodline in them. You can look at him and tell he a mulatto. He ain't full blooded Caucasian. You can look at him. He looked like a mulatto. All right. So keep in mind that's the connection why he had that. These original Italians knew that that, that we come from Nubians. We are really Nubians, really. Just lighter, lighter Nubians. That's the that's how he connected with the Queen and uh, Bumpy. Keep in mind the same thing with Fra Frank Costello. Frank Costello is as part mulatto, which is because he because because he can to Lucky Luciano. Keep that in mind. So that's so Lucky Luciano was good friends with Bumpy before he went to jail. We're talking about in the fifties. We're talking about in the fifties with Lucky Luciano because Bumpy went to jail. I think fifty one, and he got out. Right, he did 11 years. No, nah, a little bit before that, he went to jail. He did 11 years and got out. We're about to get to that. But you're talking about in the 50s, right? In the 50s. Oh, uh, no, nah, take that back. It, it had to be before that. It had to be going back before that. Matter of fact, let me let me get let me get the exact date on date on that. Let me get the exact date on Lucky Luciano. So I won't uh hold on. We get so we got the internet right here. We got the internet. But Lucky Luciano is before all the bosses I'm about to tell you about. He started the uh, the fight. It's like, okay, okay. So he was born in uh, uh, 1897. I mean, 1897. Right? And he died in 62. So it, it had to be like, okay. Watch this. Let me do this. Okay. Look. Uh, yeah. Okay. So these were all of these were the original five families, but they changed their names. Okay. I'm trying to get the year was this done. Okay. Five families committee. Five families. La Costa Notre. Oh, look. Okay, 1931. I think it's, it's about around 1931, between 19. Yeah, so that's when they that's when they said, look, and I think Bumpy went to jail. He must he might have got out in 51 and went before then. Hold on, let me see. Let me see. Let me make sure. Bumpy went. Yeah, in 1952, was sentenced to 15 years in prison for drug conspiracy, and he I think he did 11 years and got out. So it had to be like 62, 63 when he got out. I think. All right, now let's get back to it. I just wanted to make that clear about Lucky Luciano, make that connection. All right, now let me show you what was going on then. Cause it's all gonna make a connection. This, this is all. Watch how I tie this back in. 1931, right? Uh, thank you, Tony Duck. Watch how this tie all in. Cause Malcolm, all this play a part. Elijah Muhammad was uh, in, Elijah Muhammad had to do business with the mob. I'm gonna show you. And it was all cause of this right here. We'll get to him. Kind of move along ahead. But remember this. Remember this newspaper clipping right here. This is why Elijah had to get in big. Remember, I told you that the mafia was controlling the docks, and Elijah Muhammad was about to make a power move to take over the fish market. And that's when he that's when the mob tried to sabotage his fish market. 
right? It says Muslims import over 2 million pounds of fresh fish. Just imagine what they were selling that for a pound. How much money was the largest stand to make off of this, right? And he would, and then he would have kept this going. It would have grow bigger. And he did keep it going, but the mob had to get their cut. I'm going to show you that back. Now, let me show you the heads of the five families at that time so you can get an idea of what was going on. Okay? So we have Hold on. All this is going to play a part, man. Keep in mind. All right, so Carlos Gambino was the Gambino family. He got, he's one of the guys that was, that was sitting in there with Bumpy when they go to the, the meeting where, where the families meet. Also, Chin Chikante, uh, Vincent Chikante, he don't become boss to 1981, but he was the stand-in boss for Vito Ginegichi. I think I'm saying his name right. Okay. Frank Costello was like the old boss, but over the five families, but I'm going to show you the five bosses. But like I say, Frank Costello is the dude they made the movie Godfather about. Keep that in mind. And he didn't want that top bumpy. Uh, 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 allegedly. This dude right here was one of the bosses. His name is Tommy. Tommy uh, Lugici. Uh, him. He's one of the bosses. This was one of the bosses. His name is Joey Bananos. They call him uh, Banana. Joey Bananas. Joey Bananos was one of the dudes that was in contact with Bumpy. He was one of the leaders of the five families. Right? Hold on. I'm going to show you. Uh, let me, when I get these guys on the screen, I'm going to show you. Adam Clay Powell, all this is going to tie in together, man. I'm telling you. All right, we got Vincent. Chikante was the one that was always out the bumpy. He's a young knucklehead that became, he was Vito's driver. And for you not, for you not familiar with the Godfather movie, oh, look. the Godfather movie, uh, not the Godfather in Harlem, the original Godfather movie, like I said, that was about Frank Costello. Uh, I think I got, like, okay, we got Carlos Gambino. We got Joseph Bananos. We got uh, who else was one of the bosses during that time? And keep in mind, they put a hit on. Uh, okay, here we go, right here. All this is gonna tie in together, man. Keep in mind. Slide. Okay. F O I. Hold up. I'm almost to it. See how they slow on my screen down. All right, here we go. All right, y'all. If you tune, just not tuning in, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. This dude was one of the bosses too. This dude right here, let me take him off the screen because this dude that killed shot uh, bro, uh um Osborne. Hey, this dude right here, his name, his name is Joe Colombo. You might have seen him in uh season. He was one, he was over the Colombo family. And actually, he was a underboss too, uh, became the boss in stand-in when Vincent Chicano got arrested. Right? Okay, hold up. I gotta show you uh it's one more boss that I'm missing, and that is before I go into talking about these guys. Uh hey. Come on, come on, come on. What's the hold up here? Can't find a damn picture. Oh, yeah, okay. Hey, this right here is Vito. Okay, Vito uh, Ginegichi, he, he's the real boss of the Ginegichi family, and Vincent Chicano was a stand-in boss. And then when Vincent, uh, when Vincent Chicano got arrested, Joe Colombo, he, was, he asked Joe Colombo to stand in for him. So the original five bosses in that time is uh, Carlos Gambino, 
Tommy uh, Lulichi, uh, I, can't, I can't remember how I say his name. It's, it's like Lulichi. <laughs> and then Joey Bananas. And uh, this dude Vito, he was locked up. And uh, I think that's it. Hold up. It's one more boss that I feel like I'm missing. You got Vito. This dude right here. Joey Pafachi. That's it right there. Okay, all right. So take him down. Frank Cust These are the guys right here. All right. So these are the five right here, right? Minus, uh, hold up. These are the original five right here, right? The five families. And like I say, Vito, he was in that place for Vito. And he didn't become boss really till 1981. Yeah, I'm about to get to who these guys were working for. You ain't going to believe it. I'm telling you, man, the niggas that were bright, the niggas that were delivering this shit to us, to these guys, were look like us, but they ain't us. I'm about to, man, I'm about to put you right on to their home base. Watch what I tell you. All right, so keep in mind, these are the five families. Like I say, Lucky Luciano organized it, and then during the time of Bumpy, uh, this became, these guys became the uh, leaders of these five families. And I call out the other guys. Now, keep in mind, these it, it was these five families were of New York, but it was other families in New York that had their own boss, and then it was other families in Philadelphia, Chicago, Detroit, all the major cities, New Orleans, Miami, Las Vegas, Phoenix, Arizona, LA, uh, Seattle. So it's different other people that you might not know about. These guys that became famous. Because of how uh, the stuff that was going on in New York and how it was uh, the mecca for this doogie. Now, keep in mind, let's, let's make the connections. So these guy Bumpy was a part of these guys, really, because he he was being in the meetings with all five families, him. And to add his connection, uh, to add his connection was Frank Costello. All right, here's another picture of Vincent Chincano. He looked like uh, Elvis was a little bit, don't he? All right, this is the guy that was constantly trying to kill Bob Bumpy. He was a young guy, knucklehead, and he, he, he had a little racism in him, right? He had a little racism in him, and he was constantly trying to kill Bumpy because while Bumpy was in jail, when Vito put him in charge, he took over the drug trade and took over Harlem. He was, he was the main plug for Harlem. To all, all the drug dealers in Harlem. He was the main plug. And his connection was straight to the Corsicans. Now, who are the Corsicans? Because Bobby said in the movie at a certain point in time where he got he got a he, he got direct contact with the Italians plug, and they were the Corsicans. Let's see who the Corsicans. Now you pull up the Corsicans, you find out that they sis they 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 really were dark skinned moors. Watch this. Look at this. He said that man, I finally made a plug with the with the plug, the uh Corsicans. I think, man, who the Corsicans is? I, I looked it up. The Corsicans are the Moors. So hold up. It's about to get crazy. So you see the flag right here, right? These are the Corsicans from Sicily and the little island. These are the people who were, and, and they call him in the movie, the one dude that named Sir 98. They said that uh, he was a chemist. They said that these people were alchemists, that these people, these Corsicans were alchemists who can, who, who can make 100% strong doogie. I got to say doogie. I can't say the other thing. So for, for the people that uh, don't know what Doogee is, somebody drop it in the chat, boom. Somebody dropped it. So the, the people who who were selling the Italians, Doogee, remember I told you these Italians really are Moors. They come from Moors background because the, the Moors were there first, and these people are mulattoes, the children of the Moors. So go back. It's on season two, I think episode one, uh, I mean two or three. Well, Bumpy makes statement, and they tell you the truth right there. It said it's based on a true story. It said that he he said I, he told all he met up with all the big people from around Detroit, 
right? Let me show you one of those people that he meant to. It's a, it was like 12 different people from every different big major city. 12 different people from big major cities that he met up with. One of those dudes that he met up with. Uh, let me show you one of these dudes' name was, I think this the dude right here. This is the dude. I wonder, do I got his name up there? This is the dude right here. Here you go, right here. This is one of the leaders of Philly. He was the leader of the gang in Philly. So Bumpy Johnson had called a meeting to meet up with all the gang leaders around the United States from different major cities where the Italians had. Sam Christian. Some of you probably don't never even heard of him. But he was good friends with Bumpy. And he tried to betray Bumpy, I think, and, and he ended up getting took out. But um, but he was one of the leaders that when Bumpy called a meeting and he told him, he said, man, I finally got the Italians plug, which is the Corsicans. The Corsicans. Now, like I said, I went and typed in and pulled up who the Corsicans is. And it's, some, it's the Moors, which explains why when you watch the series, another one of them guys, I'm going to show you he's from Detroit, part of the Flint gang right here. Earl Flint. He was part of uh, Earl Flint. He was part of one of the he was one of the guys that Bumpy called to the meeting too, from Detroit. Right? These are the real pictures, not, not the ones in the movie. Right? These are real pictures of these people. We made, did found these people. All right, but I just want to make that clear. Now I only I could find the French Connect. Now I'm gonna show you what they look like from the movie, and then I'm gonna show you what the real real guys look like. I right, in the series uh, Godfather Harlem. They show you these two guys. These guys are the French Connect. Now, they leave us under the impression for a while that this dude is the main plug. But the whole time, this dude is the plug. The Corsican. The dude from... And look, if you trace this dude back, they even found a dude... The, the, for the actor, they even found a dude that's actually from Al Madrid. <laughs> I'm telling you, these people play real games. Yeah, the Corsicans. And they connected with the French. We're going to connect that, uh, make that connection to uh, uh, our tune. I think that's my brother Mark. Shout out Mark, man. I love my brother Mark Cooper, man. Hey, so the whole time when you watch the series, they come to find out this dude is the real chemist, the alchemist, and the plug. And this dude just was a front man, a, a, a white face using the talk. Now, something interesting, because they show you, they show, yeah, man, look, I'm going to point it out. Look, something interesting about this. I right, so the whole time when this we're thinking this white boy is the, the, the head plug and that this dude just is assistant. When he the, the dude, the black dude really is the real plug pumping it in, and this dude is his assistant, which they later found out was working with the uh feds to turn the uh turn the real plug in, the black dude. So the whole time this dude played like he was retarded and stupid, like he didn't speak English or nothing, but he spoke well English, all it. And he let the other dude do all the talking. And the whole time, the people that he, the people that uh, he said that these people, we don't want to sell to Negroes. We don't want to sell to black Americans. We want to sell to Italians because we don't want black Americans to come up. They, they want, they didn't want to sell the bumpy. And you got to keep in mind, look at this right here. This Willow's Peak, this, uh, these horns on his head. Remember I told you these people, these people are Balkans. They found a bulk, an actual bulk in the play this shit, man. These people are really, these people are really playing with us, bro. I'm telling you, man. They look at this dude. Look at the, the, the you can tell he a part of Tanush for you, for you people who are bands. You can tell he with Ta, he, he part of that Tanush species. The niggas that look like us, but ain't us. These, uh, uh, Halites. These Halites, the people like James Baldwin. The people who we chased out of ancient Kemet and they went to Transylvania, who went to Switzerland, who went to France, got kicked out, went back to Al Madrid. Then they went to Barbados. Then they came to America and they part of the conjure war. And they the ones that's popping the doogie and the other shit. We're going to make the connection. Yeah, yo. Somebody say, y'all, get these niggas, dog. Get these niggas. Get these niggas. Y'all, get these niggas. 
So like I said, the whole time we thinking that the plug is the white guy, but the plug is this guy. And they end up killing this dude once they find out he was working for the feds. And then the dude come out and come clean and kind of find out he was the plug pushing 3,000 kilos of doogee into New York. And he didn't want to bumpy cut his face right here. Now this, now, this picture right here is the only picture out of all the pictures that I got that's, that, out, that ain't the original guy. I found everybody. I even found the, the real French guy. Let me show you. This is the real French guy. His name Gene. His name Gene. This is the real French guy right here. I couldn't find. Uh, now, this is the dude that played him in the movie, right? The, the actor. This is the actor right here, right? They got to play the guy. Now, I found the guy real picture. I couldn't find Sir 98 picture. The dude, right? The, the guy playing the black dude. But this is the dude real picture right here. This him in real life. The French, the dude that was the front man for the black dude from France. All right, this is a real picture of him right here. Now, you, you can see they found somebody that, that looked re closely resemble him. Let me sh show you. Let me put that, that actor side by side with this guy. We're going to get into that, too, the, the breakdown of the mob, uh, how the mob ran. All right, hold up. Let me put you side by side with this guy. Now, this is the, they found, they found people who look almost close to the people in real life. Uh, here's a, uh, okay, look at this. Look, how, look, look at the close resemblance. It almost looked like they got some kind of bloodline connection. This is the guy in the movie, and this is the real guy. That was the front. That was the front man for the dark hand, for the black hand, who was really the real chemist, the real plug. These alchemists from Corsic, uh, uh, these uh, Corsicans. Okay. So this is the real guy in real life named Gene from uh, France, who was the plug, uh, like the front man for that black dude. This black dude right here. Okay. So, like I say, we couldn't find the real picture of uh, Sir Ninety Eight. That might not have been his real name. But this is a the, the picture of the actor. But like I showed you, look at look at how they found the guy. Look at this guy. This this how his hair design is. This is a halo trait right here. This is the horns. This is a Vulcan trait. Look at his ears. They down there pointing. I'm telling you, man, you can't make shit like this up. They found this guy specifically from Al Madrid. If you chase that dude, the real dude back, he from Al Madrid. And like I say, to connect back with the uh, with the Corsicans. Now this is a flag. It's connected with Sicily, and I'm saying, damn, Rod was on the ass. Look, all right, this is one of they this is a flag, and these are the people who were moving, bringing the shit in from France. I right, keep in mind another part is Clash's Clay, who who who's uh who on, who changed his name to Muhammad Ali, right? He was getting ready to fight Jones, and he went to have a meeting with Malcolm X. Hold up. He went to go have a meeting with Malcolm X, and some kind of way. The feds had a bug in Malcolm X Moss, and they found out Muhammad was about Muhammad Ali was about to uh he was that he was a Muslim, but they didn't want him to announce it until he won the championship. Right? So this guy, let's pull up this guy. This happened, this shit actually happened in real life, man. And they telling you, right? They tell you everything, detail, down to the fucking line, man. So this guy, because I keep in mind the uh I think it was the CIA that had the bug, or it might have been the feds. But uh, they had the, the uh, these uh, Italians had connections with the feds, and they got a copy of their tape. And they they uh, they kidnapped uh, Ali and brought him back to their lodge, and they tried to get they they uh, tried to uh, blackmail Ali to tell him he had to throw the fight against Jones. And they had uh, uh, this was Vincent Vincent Chicano, also known as Chin, in the movie. Right, and this is the real picture of him, your know, real picture of Ali. This fight actually took place. So he was trying to black get uh lead to blackmail Ali to take the fall in this fight. 
for the tape that they had on him announcing that he was a Muslim. They wanted to end his career. But uh, but uh, but uh, Bumpy Johnson ended up going to get the tape from uh, Chicano. And that's what a war that started a war also between Bumpy. But he was already Vincent Chicano was already messing with Bumpy from the day one when he got out. Day one when Bumpy got out, uh, Vincent Chicano was messing with him. Why? Because he knew that Bumpy was gonna make a claim back to Harlem and take back over Harlem. And he didn't want Vincent Chicano was making millions of dollars off of selling doji to the Nubians in Harlem. So he didn't want Bumpy to get a cut of that. Also, another connection. And like I say, this is going to tie in with the Malcolm X tape. This is the guy that got really got Malcolm killed right here. Now, they said, I know Dick Gregory said that, uh, said that the guy, uh, the Pinto, this guy right here. Let me show you. This is a guy that he said they, that Dick Gregory said got him killed, but this guy he played a part in it and getting Malcolm's speech ready for the UN, but he wasn't the guy that they was they were scared about. This guy right here. Right? Hold on, I'm gonna show you the guy, the Pinto. Because uh Malcolm was meeting with him too over in Africa in Nairobi. Right? And we're gonna break more of the Malcolm story down on the Malcolm tape. Right? Like I say, hold on, we'll come back to that. Okay, here's the guy right here. This is the guy Dick Gregory said that got Malcolm killed. Now, keep in mind, he is correct about when Malcolm was being gunned down, right, over in uh, in Harlem or New York, Niro uh, what's the name, was being gunned down in Nairobi at the same thing on time. So that is, that, that's a fact, right? So it got to be, it is some kind of connection between him and Malcolm, but the real guy that they was afraid of and they was gonna kill him and Malcolm at the same time if Malcolm would have get gave that speech at the UN. This guy right here. Now, uh, this guy's name is. Hold up, I'm gonna tell you his name. I know so. Guevara, Guevara. Guevara, Chi, I can't say his name, man. I don't know. I, can't, I don't want to butcher his name, but this is the guy right here. He gave that speech at the UN, right? He gave this speech at the UN. And Malcolm X was supposed to give a speech at the UN during this same time where they were going, well, the Alphabet boys were going to take both of them out with a rocket launcher. But Bumpy Johnson went and pulled, went to Malcolm X's house and pulled the gun on him. And said that you ain't going, I don't, I shoot you in your foot. I ain't letting you leave. And he saved Bumpy Johnson saved Malcolm life like two or three times. Right? Two or three times. Now the the, the alphabet boys is gonna take him out right then at this UN meeting, at this speech. And you can go pull this speech up, and he you can you can go pull this speech up, and they got it on YouTube where this dude gave his speech. Malcolm was supposed to get his this is the real dude that they was afraid of. Malcolm connect Malcolm's connection with, and he connected. He's like Fidel Castro, right hand man. Now let me put all the I'm gonna put put all the shit together. All right, this is the speech right here. You go check it out. You probably can't hear the sound. Right, this guy is the real guy that they was afraid of, of Malcolm connecting with that when he was connecting with this guy, a Cuban revolutionaries. Who's also connected with Fidel Castro? He like Fidel Castro, right hand man, right? This guy. They didn't like this guy because they said he was a communist, and Malcolm was a communist, and he connected with this guy. This is Fidel Castro. Now keep in mind, they tell you in this movie about the guy. They 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 end up getting rid of the guy, but this guy Wild Bill was a a leader of a of a fraction. Of the secret squirrels who was part who was responsible for the JFK. They're responsible for the many many attempts on um they show you this dude in the movie. This is a real picture of the guy who was one of the a wild bill who was trying to get at the Fidel Castro 
who orchestrated the JF, who was part of the orchestration of the JFK, who was orchestration, uh, they was trying, they was out to Malcolm. And this dude, this dude didn't work with Hoover. Hoover them was a whole nother different fraction that was out to Malcolm. Keep in mind, man, Malcolm had a lot of people out there. He had the FBI, the CIA, military intelligence, New York police, the Mossad tried to kill him over in uh in Egypt. He had everybody in the world watching him. But this guy bumping them end up working with this guy. This guy ended up this, this, the uh the alphabet boys had large amounts of that white girl. We gotta say it like that. The alphabet boys had large amounts of white girl and they they was just burning it up. But they didn't have a market for it really at that time because the doji was the main market. And that market for the white girl was well for uh rich white people. But then when Bumpy got mad, eventually after things went bad with the plug from Mar Marseille, when they didn't want to sit because they didn't want to sell to the niggas, they wanted to sell to Italians. And they 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 cut the nick, they sell to the niggas. They didn't like, they didn't want niggas to be come up like that and be in control like that. Right? Bumpy had had to plug for a while though. Right? Because I'm gonna tell you why. I figured they looked that, that these uh these dark skinned guys looked at Bumpy as, as partially one of them, which is why they liked him a little bit. Right? But this is the dude you can look him up, man. Wild Bill, look up Wild Bill for the CIA. This dude. These people, them, these people were savages, man. I'm telling you. I right, this dude, I think this dude's name is hold on. He was a snitch. He was the first one that broke the oath of the mafia. His name is Joey Falachi. Joey Falachi is the one that turned, he was with the Ginagichi family, one of their soldiers, I think, hitman, who turned and was about to get ready to take down the whole five families. Right, and so and keep in mind, Bumpy, they wanted Bumpy to kill this guy. The five families wanted Bumpy to kill this guy because he because Bumpy Johnson owed them three hundred thousand dollars from a drug deal gone bad. Hold on, let me show you. And keep in mind, look at Bumpy's Willow's Peaks, and he was a short fella. I'm telling you, I believe he was connected, man, to these these same jokers. He pumped poison on the streets too. Like, look at this guy. Like I say, hold up. We got more. All right. Hold up. Okay, that's Bumpy. Okay, let me just go through these pictures. Now, keep in mind, okay, the number's running. Like, remember I told you, like we say, uh, the queen, Stephanie Sinclair, they was running numbers, and she was making a quarter million dollars. Like I say, this, the mafia run this now. The uh the, the families, the, it's really 13 families, but they're talking about the five in New York, right? The 13 families, the, the 13 mafia families run the lottery. Now they could be they like I say, they could be puppets for the black hand. I'm not nah, they is puppets for the black hand, right? So they running the numbers today. But we started these numbers over here in America uh, amongst the newbies. Keep in mind the FOI FOI uh, connection. Keep in mind, Malcolm X was the one like that was instrumental in starting uh, setting up like a military structure for the Nation of Islam. He was he was key instrumental in making it more militant. You know what I'm saying? Uh, here's his mean. Here's Malcolm mean with Fidel Castro. And keep in mind, the Alphabet Boys uh, with Wild Bill, the dude I just showed you, they was after uh, Fidel Castro and Malcolm's meeting with him. Elijah Muhammad didn't sanction Malcolm X to get killed. Malcolm X pretty much gave up because Bumpy was protecting him. Bumpy saved his life numerous of times. But Malcolm wanted to die. After he, and I believe, I look at it from Malcolm's point of view too, Malcolm wanted to die because he wanted. He, he said, if I go ahead and die, they had to leave my children alone. But he was, he was wrong because after they killed him, they came out to his children to make they want to because that's part of their 48 laws of power you got to cut the whole seed bloodline off to make sure they can't retaliate so he was sadly mistaken when he said when he thought he's gonna lay down his life 
to protect his family. Because when they got rid of him, they came after his family. But Bobby Johnson was keeping him alive for quite some time. He, Bobby Johnson, even killed the guy, allegedly, that bombed Malcolm X, Malcolm X house. He found the dude that bombed Malcolm X house, who was another fraction of some some radical Muslims who who was part of the nation, but they but they didn't they was going against the orders of an honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the reason why they was going against the honorable uh, Elijah Muhammad is because they got influence. Now this that guy that bombed Malcolm X house, he got caught with cocaine, by and, and the CIA framed him. This guy here, this guy's the guy that framed the guy that bombed Malcolm X house. And he the one that gave talked to the guy and gave the guy the bomb to bomb Malcolm X house. This guy here, Wild Bill, who was working for the Alphabet Boys. They the ones that put the bomb on Malcolm X car. They the ones that had the people call at Malcolm X house, nigga, you gonna die. Nigga, you only got a couple days to live. Because they were mad at Malcolm because why Malcolm and I, I don't want to give too much of the Malcolm X story, but keep in mind Malcolm X changed his name to Malik El Shabazz and he claimed he got a nationality. So now he's able to speak on a national level. But the real truth is they didn't want him to get a speech to show about the injustice that was going on to what he would say. Like, they know we weren't blacks, so the injustice that was going on to the original people of this land, they didn't want him to get that speech because it was gonna be a threat to national security to the Federal Reserve. So they, they put Wild Bill was on him. Uh uh um uh, 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 Jay Kahuba was on him. Right? So this was the main, this was the guy. They end up Bobby Johnson them end up getting rid of this guy, him and Chin. Because he tried to he tried to frame uh him, Chin and, and Johnson. And they they Johnson and Chin started working together because they, they realized, hey man, we fighting each other, we losing money. Go back to this dude right here. All right, so this is a dude that was a, he's a rat. He's what they call a rat, a stanking rat. Uh, if, if the five families are listening, they probably call this guy a stanking rat. And this is the first guy to ever break the oath of this thing of ours. He the first dirty, he going, he's going down in history as the number one rat to ever live, to break the oath for the uh, mafia. Now, get in, get in mind, we ain't praising these guys. But the master teacher said that he he admired he admired the Italians because the way they the way they ran and way they they loyal to their family members, right? So he was the first guy to snitch, Joey uh, Filacci, uh, and uh, Versace. Hold on, let me make sure I'm saying his name right. It's Joey Joey Versace, but Velacci, Joey Velacci, Joey Velacci. Like say he was he was the first one that came out and snitch and like say they put Bumpy Johnson on him to hit him, but the dude it's a dude and I'm gonna show you that dude too. That was Bumpy's friend. They were supposed to hit this dude, cause this dude's gonna take down the five families. Let me show you this dude. Oh yeah, okay. This is the, this is another part. I gotta say this before. Okay. So also. If you pull up course, if you pull up uh these Corsicans artwork, if you pull up the artwork of the Corsicans, you get this artwork. Now keep in mind, this got the Hindu influence. Remember, we told you the 200 fallen were Moors. Remember, we told you they worship a group of beings called the Nagas, who are serpent reptilian, the cobra heads. And this is actually how this shit got in ancient Kemet. When they mixed in, when they came in and mixed, when the uh, Shabbat Shabazz, who were Hindus, came and came with a uh, serpent worship, came in the ancient Kemet. And that's how that serpent get on the helmet. It ain't about lower Egypt. And, and uh, that's all a bunch of crap. Whoever told you that, that that's about upper Egypt. It could mean that in a lower perspective and later. But the original meaning of it is a Hindu connection. It's the, the worship of reptilian. You go to when you go to ancient Kemet and you see the cobra head, that's dealing with the influence of the Hindus. And keep in mind, the Afar people are mixed with Hindus. Uh, M. Hotet was had Hindu in them. The Somalians are Hindus mixed with Hindu. The Afar people, the uh, the the, Nak, uh, the Nakos, they mix with Hindus. Now keep in mind, like I say, if you pull up the uh, this the, some of their artwork, 
you get some of these some of these uh statues that got these cobra heads on it with them but they face the black face right who are these people you got to keep in mind man who are these people hindus because keep in mind hala but hala and them people they wasn't full-blooded hindu hala was half hindu right or half tanush these avatars for dragonian reptilians i wish i had a picture of tanisha here where i could show you the, the the same uh indentions even on hala the same indentions of these that horn on his head the, the uh the willow's peak type stuff right i wish i had a picture of him in here to show you let's see can i pull it up real quick i want to show you it man you gotta you gotta get this in your head but keep in mind, I just showed you the art, some of the artwork. Watch this. You pull up the artwork, it's Moors. It's Moors artwork, but it got influenced. They got cobra and all these cobras on their head, just like in, in, in Hindu culture. So they so it's obviously these guys is connected with Hindus, these Moors. But like, but it goes back to tell you, I told you, like I told you, like the master teacher. He's trying to say it without saying it, but I really I, I I grasped what he was saying that these two hundred fallen were Moors and how they how that word more it don't come from what they're telling you it come from M U which is the abbreviation for one who's up and it comes from Aura a Chaldea the city of fire where these two hundred dark skinned Negroes landed. And so they and, and then the people said these people came from Aura Chaldea. So in their language of Cadian, they would say Mu Aura, more, more, not Moranos. They would say Mu Aura, Mu Aura, as in Mu Salam, one who's of peace. Mu Aura means one who's of Aura Chaldea. Abraham was a Moor. Of course, uh, if, if you want to go with Abraham was from Chaldea. So if I said Mu Aura, that Abraham was a Mu Aura, right? A Moor. And he could be, and they could, he could be one that crossed over. That's the Hebrew, one that crossed over. So Moors are Hebrews because they were doing a lot of crossing over. The, the, uh, the Moors, the M U U R, the ones that built boats, were selling around, right? Watch this. Watch this. Go and type in this. These, these Carsicanians was the, the ones that's popping the drugs, man. I'm telling you. That was doing during the time of the, and they didn't want to sell to us, but they wanted to go, they wanted to make sure it go went to our community. These are the people, man. Look. Look. You can't make nothing like this up. Look at this. If you take a line, go back and watch that series uh, on season two. I think it's episode three where Bumpy take over the plug, and the plug is the Carsicans. That's the plug, and it makes sense, like I said, because that black dude. And look at his hair. See these people hair ain't these people hair ain't straight, and it ain't not na- all the way nappy neither. Why? Because if you go look at a picture of Hala, yeah, Mu Aura, one of Chadia, right? Uh, right, Mark. So look, check this out. If you go look up a picture, that's what I was supposed to do. Try to find Hala picture. See, Hala wasn't a full blooded. These beings are not full blooded. Really, more. I mean, uh, Hindus. They mix with Anarchy a little bit because of Hala. Hala mother was a Anarchy, and his dad was a, these Hindus. These uh, straight hair uh, Dragonians in, in uh, human cars, right? Hold up, let me see. Can I pull up Baba and then make the connection? Okay, I want to see. Can I find a picture of Hala to show you? I bet if I type Black Devils in, it'll come up. Hold on, let me type this in. Watch this. I found a picture of Hala so I can show you. 
keep in mind this right here is um this right here is Murdoch's mother, and she was part no most because her dad, keep in mind her dad is a Lelu, a news brother, a news this is a news brother's daughter, damn Kina, who was Murdoch's mother. So a Lelu and uh a Lelu is a new, I mean Murdoch's granddad, and a new is Murdoch's granddad. Check that out, keep that in mind. And keep in mind, this is uh, Murdoch becomes Ra. Well, that's one of his incarnations. Oh, uh, I want to show you this picture of Hala. Ha ha. He didn't. He didn't have uh, the straight hair like these Hindus. He had a woolly type, curly type, ape type texture. All right. We should be right on it. It's got to be right here somewhere. Send it to me, Bobo. Send it. Tell me where to go. Tell me where to go. So go back. Go to the black. Kick on the black devil. Not the YouTube joint. Okay, we should be coming right up on it. Hey, live behind. I don't see. Uh, okay, it's right here. Let's take it right here. Right here, black devil. See, so can be connected. Oh, uh, let me type in. Oh, I can type in. Oh, yeah, he can go right here. He go. He go. Uh, I wonder, can I blow that up for you? Okay, let me blow this up for you. There we go, right there. Thank you, Baba. I got it right here. I'm gonna blow it up for you. So this hey, la. Man, I'm gonna blow this. This is gonna be crazy. I'm gonna blow this up for you, bro. I'm gonna blow that shit up for you. Hold on, let me get this. Let's say this. See, I'm going to show you. Look at Halo. See where he got that line right there on his head? I'm going to show you. Okay, that's in the night. Hold on. Let me save it in this uh, file. We go off all the hall. All right, now let's go pull that picture up. I'm going to show you. I'm going to put it side by side to show you what I'm talking about, man. How y'all got these niggas, man. I'm telling you. Y'all got them, bro. I'm going to blow this up for you so you can see what Halo look like. And then you can look at his hair, too. These people didn't have straight hair. These ones that look like us. They had like a, a curly type texture type hair. And I want you to hold this picture. Hold that dude picture right there. Hold up. These Corsicans. Hold up. Hold that picture. I'm going to show you. Let's blow up this Halo picture. Right here. All right, now. Hold on, that, that ain't the picture I want right here. This dude, I want to show you the picture where he had the the hat, the uh, the calyx. The calyx is a trait. Hold up, damn. Hold up, let me pull it back up. See how they like to play these games. Right, hold, up. hold up, let me pull it back up. Okay, all right. And they pull halo up, and I'm gonna show you. Put it side by side for you. So you can see, y'all, you can't make this up, man. All right, this the dude right here. We're going to blow him up. All right, this the dude. Now, if you put the picture that I just got right here. All right, so you see this. I told you about this little part right here, right? That's that Balkan part. All right, see Halo right here. He's the son of Tanish. This is the, who you calling the devil, one of the devils in the Bible. The real, the one that they was fighting when Michael fought against the dragon and his angels. These are the people you're talking about. Now, keep in mind, his uh, Halai's mother was uh, an anarchy, full-blooded an anarchy. So she had that woolly textured hair versus Halai, his dad, had straight hair. So when he was birthed, he had an in-between. So these beings didn't have a complete woolly hair. They had the in-between. But the one thing they inherited was these Willow Pete Calyx type thing from the Balkans. Now, let me blow it up and show you. Now, you see it on, you see it on Halai right there? Man, you can't make shit like this up. They playing games with us. They telling us right in our face what happened to us. When they showing you a picture, showing, showing you this dude was the real plug, and he connected right to Halo. He, he look, look at this. You can't make this up. Look at this. Look at that. They even found somebody that was connected with Halo. This dude is a damn Balkan. In real life. 
The actor's a damn Vulcan in real life. He's one of them dudes, those Vulcans who look like us, but ain't us. And like I say, I, I couldn't find a real picture of the real Sir 98, who was the, the dude that was the plug from uh, Marcelo, who hails out of uh, uh, the, the Corsican island. Yeah. So he was, this dude was a front man named Gene. And like I said, I showed you the real picture of him. Let me uh, let me get back to it. How long we been going, man? We're going to go. We're going to go long as we need. We're going to take questions in a minute, man. We're going to get as long as we need to make this clear. So who like to the hey, part of the sum up is who was the guys that were delivering that Bumpy ended up getting the plug to. And he was scoring from them for a while until he, he lost his uh his his uh i believe the mob burned down that building during the riots they burned down the building where he had the three thousand uh joints the three thousand joints of the doji you know what i'm saying the three thousand joints we got to say it like that now keep in mind another part of the movie is that this lady right here this is vincent chicano's daughter oh look let me blow it up now we told you about the snitch. When told, when gonna tell on everybody. Also, this is Mimi, the real Mimi. This is Bumpy Johnson's wife. This is Mimi, right? They got her in the movie. They got a girl that played her that looked just like her. But this is her in the real life. She actually told the whole storyline in a book that she wrote, uh, and they actually made the series based off of that book that Mimi wrote. This is Mimi Johnson, uh, Bumpy Johnson's wife right now keep in mind the knights of templar and a connection to the church we already told you all these guys knights of templar keep in mind the the italians are romans and they are connected with the roman catholic church all oh, this gonna tie in later this was another gang that bumpy met up with too to make the plug connections this is one of the tape recorders that malcolm used right hold up i want you i want to talk about this girl right here stella chaconti all right. Now, this lady got a lot of people killed. Her dad was like this overprotective little crazy guy. Who's her dad? This guy right here. This is her dad who hated Bumpy at first. Then he started working with Bumpy once he saw how much money Bumpy can make him. But he the kid, he this dude killed three of her boyfriends. One of them a black guy by the name of Teddy Green. This is Teddy Green right here. The mob put a hit on him because he kept on messing with they didn't want he didn't want his daughter messing with a negro and keep in mind what time frame we in we still in the uh the, the 60s uh you know we in the 60s man so you you gotta keep in mind he didn't want his daughter messing with a new uh his daughter he a mob boss he's a mob boss and he didn't want his daughter messing with me messing with a negro and it really was like a smear onto his face to the other mob bosses that his daughter was running off with a nigga. <laughs> so he he wanted him dead. He tried for a long time to kill him until they eventually killed him. Right? Uh Bishop Chicano. All right, here's another guy. All right, let's, let's get back to Frank Costello. For you guys, hit that light if you come in, hit that light. Now, this is Frank Costello, I think, after he after they tried to put a hit on him. Because Frank Costello didn't want to agree to the to go into the hair run business. If you go watch the godfather they show you the part where the godfather turned down i think it was uh gambino them i mean not gambino it had to be uh it was joey bananas i think he was part of it joey bananas this is joey bananas right here let me show you because all this is gonna tie in together to what happened to us if you think it don't matter all this is gonna tie in to where how they took over all uh, the italians took over all our major cities and keep in mind, all of our major cities were our strong points as Nubians, as Native Americans. All of our strong points were our, money, our capitals. All of our capitals, where they, where they say that, oh, Baton Rouge or, or, or these certain areas are capitals, right? That's why they were our strong. That's these were our strongholds as our as our uh, as the chief centers for Big Mama, as far as how we distribute the natural wealth of the land. Right, so they these Italians went to each of these main home strongholds, like I said, Miami, Chicago, Detroit, New York, uh, 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 Philly, 
right? All these main strongholds, the, the Italians were the muscle for the dark hand to these uh these Corsicans, these Corsicans, Moors to come in and pretty much uh for, for the second wave of the conjure because the, the, the one of the some of the older waves go back all the way to Monte Oka to Pocahontas, but during the 60s to really put a cap on us because we hadn't really we had really completely they had completely killed our spirit as far as us sticking together because keep in mind in the 60s it wasn't no it really wasn't that much black on black crime negroes barely even owned a gun the long automatic weapons the most a nigga had was a shotgun and a revolver right and if he if he had some pool like bumpy he might have got a hold uh, like the queen he might have had a hold of a tommy gun right so niggas didn't really have no firepower. Niggas wasn't killing each other. We stuck together back then, real tight. But money, a lot of a lot of the mafia offered a lot of our people money to sell us out too. Just like they sold, like uh, some of Bumpy's own people was trying to cross them with the mob, right? Right. But this is Frank Costello. Uh, okay, I was supposed to show you Joey Joey Gabinas. I mean Joey uh, Bennett. Joey Bananas. His name is Bananos, but they call him Joey Bananas. This dude right here. And to me, he wasn't really a racist. He just, you know, he, he was more of a business guy. Joey Bananas, to me, was more of a business guy. Like, he would work with Bumpy if he saw that he, he could make money. It was like, you know, it wasn't no racist thing with him. Although these attack and to me, these Italians really can't be racist because they really are niggas. They niggas too. They, are, they come from the Moors. These Italians, so they can't even, they can't be racist. Lucky Luciano was a mulatto. You can look at him and tell. And like I say, Lucky Luciano passes down to Frank Costello, right here. Who is this? Is Frank Costello? Who is the real? This is Lucky Luciano right here. Now look at this guy. You can't tell me this guy. Look at his wavy hair. Man, white folks got fur. This dude don't got no fur. This dude got some kind of seven a curl. He got a curl, man. This dude is a mulatto. That's why he liked Bumpy. He knew he got black in him. His grandma or somebody, like Baba said, if you shake their tree hard enough, a newbie in a fallout. And I guarantee you, a newbie in a fallout, Lucky Luciano's uh, chair, a fallout, Lucky, uh, Lucky Luciano's uh, tree. Look at that. This dude was a mulatto, man. And like I say, he passed it down. To Frank Costello, who was the real movie they made The Godfather about. Okay. And like I say, it was other fractions. It was other fractions. Okay, here you go right here. Okay. So Vito, Vito Carleon is really Frank Costello in real life, who was Bumpy Johnson's best friend. And like I say, he mulatto too. These guys mulattoes. He mulatto too. He got black in him going back through look because he because he came to Lucky Luciano. Right? And like I say, I ain't got to beat it over your head to show you that the Moors was in uh, uh, Italians first. That they was in Spain. They was in uh, uh, the Corsican land. They was in that land first. I ain't got to beat that over your head. But he, like I say, he's the one supposed to talk Bumpy how to play chess and school them. And like I said, the name Vito, because it, it is a mob boss named Vito that was over the same family. Vito, uh, so some of the stuff too, but most for the most part, it was taken from Frank Costello, but some of the stuff was taken from Vito, Vito Gunagichi. This dude right here, let me show you. His actual name is Vito. He actually went to jail, and Chen, like I say, can't took over his operation, the one that didn't like Bumpy. Okay. Oh, um, let, let me show you Vito. This Vito right here. So this Vito, Ginovici, right? So the name they took from this guy and applied it to the Godfather. And it, the, the family is really the same family, like a, the Costellos, right? Now, this guy was a boss, but he went to jail and he put Chin, Chin Vincent Chin Chicano, in charge of his operation, like I said. Uh, let me get down to it, okay? Also, another fraction, you for you guys that might have watched the uh, the Teamsters, 
This right here dude name is Russell Buffalino. He was the mob boss over Philly. They had the Etruscans. The Etruscans is Halo is connected back with Halo now. The 200 Fallen Angels. And the 200 Moors. Right? This is uh Russell Buffalino. Now, for you that uh, watch the movie, it's a movie out about this guy uh, called the Irishman. Well, because I'll keep in mind, all this is connected to the Kennedy thing. Because you got to keep in mind. Oh, let me let me break that part. Hold on, let me break this thing down too about the um, the mafia, how, how the mafia ran, and make this connection. Because this is what Bumpy learned and how Bumpy set up. Okay, and 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 the mafia got it from the Moors from Rome. And the Moors, they got it from ancient Kemet. The Moors, actually, to me, I believe the Moors brought it to ancient Kemet, this, this, this organization, because they already had the 200 fallen, where they had captains, they had generals in the 200 fallen angels. Right? So I believe they got the uh, the structure from them. And uh, on, even on the good side, supposedly, well, uh, Murdoch and them side, they had captains and shit like that. So the 200 had to get it from them as well. Because they had uh Enlil was the boss, and then they had the underboss, and the, the visor, his visor was hey uh Enlil's visor was Hanuel, Gabriel not in your Bible, the messenger of God. Right? So I believe it goes all the way back to that, but it also goes to ancient Kemet to where they got the Pharaoh, right? Then they got the uh visor, and, and they call it the concierge and and uh the mafia, they call it the concierge. And then they got the underboss was like the, the second pharaoh in command. Then they got uh, like lieutenants or whatever, then soldiers. This is the same. This is the same way the military set up. This is the same way the Washington, D.C. is set up with the president, the vice president. They got advisors, advisors, the cabinet. Uh, they they Even uh, back then, the pharaohs went around with a magician. Nowadays, they call him a doctor. So the president ride around with his own personal doctor and his convoys and his convoy, right? So most of all government structures, even going back to ancient Kemet, like I said, going all the way back to Enlil them, is set up like similar to this. And that's that's how the this is how the mob stay in power. Now, like I say, we had this set up, but when they introduced Doji and the white girl and liquor and start and, and, and start locking us up in prisons. They start to break down the family institutions. And like I say, Roy Hayes would say that, hey, this boss would be Big Mama, right? Big Mama would be the boss. And then her underboss would be the, the Big Daddy. Big Daddy would be the underboss. Her visor would be her wisest daughter, you know, the one that went to school, that know all, that, that speak the different, uh, that know about the, uh, the Matrix, right? Because Big Mama really didn't deal in the Matrix. But she always had a daughter or a son who she sent out to learn all the stuff that was going on so she so he could be the advisor for the family right and the underboss with big daddy then the capos were all the sons and the daughter some of the daughters and then the soldiers would be the, the grandchildren right so the capos would be like the brother big brothers they were like the enforcers and all that for big mama so this is how we had our family structures set up so they really learned it from us. Like I said, the queen was already had the scripture before Dutch Schultz even had his scripture. Before they even set up the five families and start organizing like that, do Lucky Luciano. We was already doing it over here in the in the nineteen hundreds. And like I say, I have reason to believe the Moors have a big influence on this because these guys are Sicily and they really, but the Italians are really are Moors. Here's another diagram from how it's set up, how the family system is set up, right? That's Vincent. He got arrested. Try to play like he uh, he was crazy, right? And that's, that happened in real life. Here's Malcolm. Here's the the real the real guy that was the French Connect, the front man for the real for the real French Connect. We already showed that already. I'm just going through, make sure I cover everything. Okay, yo, the mob had something to do with the hit on Kennedy. That's what I was going to talk about. Now, okay, let me give you a little, little background on Kennedy real quick. And, uh, keep in mind, Kennedy was part of the Irish Mafia. His dad's name was Joe Kennedy. Right? Roy uh, filled me in on this a couple weeks back about uh, Joe Kennedy. And I actually went and did some more research on it and found out more about it. So Joe Kennedy was part of the Irish Mafia. 
Because keep in mind, so you got the Italian mafia and you got the Irish mafia, right? So it's, and it's, a, it's other couple other mafias. But keep in mind, the Irish are Moors, go back to the Moors too. So this shit, this, this shit is really hard to get around. The Irish go, the Irish are the Moors. They got mulattoes too. Except the redhead ones like JFK now. The redhead ones are out of barons who came here. Redhead green eyes is an Aldebaran trait, a Venerian trait, might I say, because the Aldebarans and Venerians are the same people. So these beings are connected with the Venerians as well, these Irishmen. Because you got black Irishmen, red hair, green eyed Irishmen, that's the Venerians connection to the Aldebarans. But to make a long story short, Joe, Joe, Ken Joe Kennedy was bootlegger was a bootlegger and he made his made his fortune off of selling liquor it tells you right here made his fortune hence he it was wasn't bootlegging what now nah, he got caught bootlegging he was in with he was in he didn't get caught but he was in with uh uh i think al capone right so the chicago outfit who helped swing the election because all they, what they did is got a whole bunch of people to go in there with using different uh, forms of ID to keep on voting so they can swing the election in certain states for uh, for Kennedy to win. And Kennedy won. Right? One of the bosses that was in on Kennedy is this guy. He's the New Orleans boss. And the other guy that was in on Kennedy, including Wild Bill, Hold on, let me show you. Kennedy was shot. Like the, even though these guys was in on it, they only played a small role in it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break that down. Now they was they, they thought they played a big role, but they really didn't. The, the CIA really was the main guys. The, the the guys, the uh, they got them with the William Greer. All right, this dude, this dude was the Chicago mob boss, and this dude, these are the two dudes that was involved with hiring. The crazy, the dude, uh, uh, okay, these are all connected. This dude right here, this is Jack Rubin, the dude that shot the dude that shot Kennedy, Osborne. Now, Osborne was hired by this guy and th these two guys because they wanted to get get back at Kennedy. They want, they wanted to, they really wanted to get rid of Joe. I mean, uh, Robert Kennedy, because uh, soon as soon as they got Kennedy in, uh, he he attorney he assigned his brother who's an attorney. As the Attorney General, Robert Kennedy, Bobby, right? All this is been the connect. Hold up. All right, I'm gonna find a picture of Bobby. We're gonna keep it moving though. Okay, Jack Rubin, that's him. And then you got Osborne, is the guy that shot, supposedly shot Kennedy, but he didn't shoot Kennedy. The, uh, so this guy, these guys hired Osborne to take the shot to to uh, put a hit on uh, Kennedy because, like I say, to make a long story short, when Kennedy became president, the Irishman, they uh, he assigned Robert Kennedy as his attorney general, and the first thing Robert Kennedy do is go after the five, go after all the mob bosses. So they want they said, "Damn, this nigga trying to play us," but they couldn't get to Kennedy. Without uh, they couldn't get to Robert without first taking out Kennedy because they knew if they went at Robert first, who's the one that was coming after them, then Kennedy would use the National Guards and whatever power he had to come down on the five families. So they said we got to get rid of Kennedy first, and it was up. Uh, that's this was their reason to get rid of him, right? These mob bosses they wanted to get rid of him because Robert Kennedy was after them, and they wanted to stop that fraction. And then once they hit Kennedy, they hit Robert next. Right. But the, another fraction was trying to take out um, another fraction of the black hand was trying to get rid of Kennedy, too, because of the, he was instrumenting real uh, trying to bring back real money like silver and things of that nature. Also, also, he could he was connected with trying, he was about to reveal certain things about the UFO thing because they tie in with the Venerians. So that's why the CIA was after and they actually took the fatal shot. The guy that actually took the shot name was William Greer, and he was actually the driver of the car. 
and I, I can't play that video where it shows you that he had a revolver and he reached back and shot Kennedy. Now they blame they blamed uh, Osborne. He was like the fall guy that was hired by this mob, these uh, Chicago outfit and the New Orleans outfit. They give you all this information in the movie, so they shouldn't flag me or say that I'm making up shit when you told us exactly what happened. Now, like I say, the, the, the part we're trying to show you is is that the, the guys that bumped the whole thing is the guys that Bumpy was getting the dope, uh, eventually getting the doogee from was Moors. These guys. Oh, yeah, we, uh, we got to talk about this right here, too. I talked about it a little bit. I touched on it, but let me touch on it some more. Now, because people said I was making this shit up when I said that Elijah Muhammad had got into it with the mafia and the mafia sabotaged his fish because he was about to take over the fish game in New York and in Chicago. Uh, Elijah Muhammad was about to call the fish market and uh, and these and these um, these Italians controlled the dock for the import and export of fish. But like I say, it sits right here in this newspaper clipping the Muslims and they refer to the nation of Islam and they got Elijah Muhammad's picture right there. Imports over 200 million pounds of fresh fish. Now, how much money is this? If the mob is the number one provider in the fish markets over there and these agents, how much they stand to lose if a larger Muhammad uh, gained two million pounds of fish and he began selling it and to the, to the Nubians who are, who were buying fish from the Italians. Now keep in mind that the, the, anytime you going to affect the Italians business, they're going to do something to try to cut you out or stop you or set you down to make sure you ain't messing with their money. See, Elijah Muhammad is going to mess with their money uh, with this 200 pounds. Of fish. He, he really was getting more than that. This way, they just, they published this because this is a threat to them. Nation was making 50 some million dollars a year at, uh, over at one point. But what I'm telling you is they sabotaged, uh, they eventually came out the Alam and Muhammad or the Nation of Islam, the, the, the uh, these uh, Italians to try to sabotage his fish market. And I believe the alphabet bars played a big part in it with Wild Bill now, because they were constantly sabotaging the nation and their businesses and things. They were constantly sabotaging the nation. But like I say, Elijah Muhammad, they try to make him look like some kind of geezer in the, um, in the movie, but Elijah Muhammad didn't sanction Malcolm X murder. He Actually, he told them, don't touch him. But there was a couple of people who were jealous of Malcolm and hated that Malcolm was close with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad considered Malcolm like a son to him. And that he told Malcolm that when he died or when some, if something ever happened to him, that Malcolm was going to be the next in charge. Elijah Muhammad told Malcolm that he's going to be the next in charge, that he was like his son. And that, I, that, that the reason why I'm telling you uh, that Mal, he was telling Malcolm all the stuff that he was telling him was to protect him. He said, you got enough enemies already. Don't ant antagonize the government. You got enough enemies already. These people will kill you because he knew what happened to Noble Jew Ali. He knew what happened to other people before Malcolm that pulled the same stunt that Malcolm was trying to pull. Elijah Muhammad was trying to protect Malcolm by telling him, hey, be cool. We're going to get to the business. Let's build this nation first. We don't want to look aggressive looking so they could come down on us and try to shut us down and bring the National Guard saying that we're a threat just like they did the Black Panthers. So he, but Malcolm was a hard head. He didn't listen. He didn't listen to the wisdom of Elijah. Elijah wasn't trying to stop you from shining. Elijah was trying to keep your ass from getting killed, my nigga. Right? And then once he started talking all crazy, Elijah had to cut him off because, because if he didn't, he could bring down the whole nation. Right? He could bring down the whole nation with uh, trying to with bringing, uh, they already had infiltrators. They already had a lot of attention on them. So he can bring down the whole nation. So Elijah cut, cut him off. And really Malcolm cut himself off, really. Malcolm cut himself off, really. And then, uh, like I say, Malcolm knew that he was going to get killed. But we don't want to talk too much on Malcolm on this one because we got a whole tape where I'm going to break down Malcolm's whole storyline. 
But keep in mind, the mafia plays a big part in going to our major capitals as our Native American cat home fronts, all these major cities, and taking over the, the criminal fraction. And keep in mind, some of this stuff that you consider this crime now wasn't crime to us over here when we was running out, like the, the brothels and all that. We had brothels. Big Mama had her own brothels. Big Mama was the madam. Big Mama had her own hustles, the card game, the gambling shacks. Big Mama started the card game, started the gambling shacks. And Big Mama goes all the way back to our Nana. Our Nana is Big Mama. During the time of the Anarchies, when the Anarchies came, our Nana had a brothel set up. She was a madam. She had a place called, in her, in her particular area, called the Our Nana's House of Horror. And the, the, the Anarchies, who were workers of the mines, used to come and go to uh, this brothel in the middle of the desert, in the land of Nod. All right, hold on. Let me stop sharing my screen. In the land of Nod. Right? Yeah, so our Nana had this brothel. Our Nana set up the gambling shacks. He had a gambling shack, a brothel, different types of the same things that they got going on in casino. Our Nana was the first one to do that on earth. Big Mama. And it triggered all the way down to if you go watch a movie called Harlem Nights, because they call these things, they call this book that they put out A Night in the Moors Harlem. The Moors, the Moors took up on that in 19, 19 BC where they started bringing these uh pale women out to caves and put and cleaning them up right so that ties in so it, it speed all the way up to uh like i say uh hall of nights with eddie murphy and them they show you they had a woman that big woman that got into a fight with eddie murphy she was a, over a brothel and they had a gambling shacks nubians because it goes all the way back to our nana ain't nothing you doing now new it ain't nothing new under the sun ain't nothing you doing new it don't matter what it is. The Anarchies is already doing it. But just making the connection with uh, going our way up until we were running the get uh, the gambling shacks. The Nubians was already doing it. Thousands of years, if not millions, going our way back to our Nana. To, to ancient Sumeria, to ancient Kemet. Big Mama Ben running numbers. Big Mama Ben had a gambling shack. Big Mama Ben had the card game going. Right? Big Mama always carried a pistol in her bra, in her purse. Tyler Perry just doing that was that part that he doing. That's how Big Mama rolled. Big Mama always had a scrap because Big Mama ran the card game. But you would be a dang on fool to rob Big Mama card games. You good as dead because they gonna find it's a small world and Big Mama copos gonna find out who you are. Cause they, cause they, cause everybody knew everybody. When you came in there, even if you had a mask, Big Mama, when you, when Big Mama know everybody, and you had to know something about the card game to rob it, and I, you, if you went in there and talked and opened your mouth, Big Mama knew uh, your voice, and she can, they, and she'll send the copos right after you. So what no, you would be a fool to rob Big Mama's card game. But like I say, I. Uh, we don't want to get too deep on that, but I'm just saying it goes all the way back. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, right? And we was doing it over here, even in Texas, all over. And now they say that it's illegal, but and you only can do it in certain areas. You can go to Las Vegas and it's legal there. When they came on our land and took over, but we would been doing this all the way back to Big Mama. You see? So we just wanted to bring that thing to you. How did Bumpy Johnson get to get called the Godfather of Harlem? It's because, like I said, he was he was supposedly tutored by who I, I have reason to believe was a mulatto. I know for sure Lucy, Lucky Luciano was a mulatto. He probably his mama or somebody or his grandma or somebody was a Nubian. And, and and like I say, Frank Costello come down from his bloodline, so Frank Costello was got black in him, got mulatto in him. And that's why he was uh, so fun to bumpy because they know hell these people we family. The Italians, who did they get their style of dress from? The Moors. The Moors dress like the, the Italians dress nice. 
And they the only like they the only supposedly if people say they pay, they don't only pay a race that can really wear gold. They the only really race outside of Nubians they can wear gold. And like I say, Nubians range from a lot of colors. But the Italians is the only people they can rock gold and it look decent and look good on them, just like it look on Nubians, which tell you that they Nubians. That's how you, want, if you, that's how you gotta do if you want to do a Nubian chick, put put some tell them, put a chain, gold chain on their neck and see how it go with their skin. If it can match with their skin, they, they they with us. They in the range of the colors of the Nubians. If it gonna go, go up with their skin, they ain't with us. This type of hour and 40 minutes long. I ain't gonna I was going that long. Hey, but shout out, man. If you want to show me some love, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. Uh, you can send us a dollar or two on Cash App. We got that in the links. Like I say, if you want to get those eight books by the Young Elder, we still got those eight books. Going for $45 donation to the Cash App or PayPal. As soon as you send the money, you get your books. Uh, make sure you leave your emails for showing the links, though. So we better get up out of here, man. I think we've been going. I didn't know we was going for an hour and 40 minutes. But uh, since it's early, we might come back for another uh, another tape, a different topic. Uh, so peace, man. We hope this helped you, gave you another piece to the puzzle. Like I say, these dark-skinned Corsicans is the ones that were trying to poison our community and keep us down. They didn't want to sell the Bumpy. I'm not saying Bumpy was a good guy, but I'm saying they didn't want to sell the Bumpy. They wanted to sell it to the Italians over us and keep us down and pump the shit in our community. You see what I'm saying? So, it, so the black hand still, we, we just trying to expose the black hand even more. I mean, if you go watch the, the uh, even if you watch the new series with 50 Cent, with the, uh, well, it ain't new, it's like the one he just put out with the uh, power, with the son Tyreek. Kind of found out the plug is a French plug. The plug that was a, the dude that was the light-skinned guy that they were getting the shit from, his plug was a dark-skinned nigga from France, a dark-skinned woman from France. I mean, they telling us right in our face, man. Go back. If anybody y'all seen that power with Tyree, the, the last third one, I guess, that when they found out who the real plug was, it was a dark skinned dude, a dark skinned woman from from uh France. Now, what up more do they need to tell you to tell you who did you? You know? Rod Hayes tried to tell you. They still said Rod crazy, he making shit up. When we tried it, when he exposed. The black hand. I'm telling you, it's two things. It's the two things Rod did for me. Rod gave me the in little part because, like, I had I was reading it in the hotel, but I just then never could bring myself to say in was the guy that was the bad guy, right? And then the other part was exposing these Etruscans and these the, the black hand because we've been taught that to to accuse the Rock Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and the Duprees, and we know those guys. But the guys that's really in charge, we don't know those guys. And they look just like us, but they ain't us. And speaking of that, tomorrow I'm going to drop a series, a full tape series with Rod, breaking the whole thing down. They look like, like us, but they ain't us. So stay tuned for that. Uh, so peace, man. Love. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe button. We out. What do?